Want to become one of the leaders of over 8 million Jehovah's Witnesses? Maybe you want to make some changes in the religion or travel everywhere to speak at different conventions while being showered with love and adoration? Maybe you just saw the two latest governing body members and realized after two seconds that you don't even need to be an engaging speaker. Jeremiah Seriously, this originally started as a video on the new governing body members, but after seeing just how plain and boring they both are Directly connected to the depth of your relationship with Jehovah Why are you so boring? I thought the religion clearly needs a new direction. So instead, here's how they became governing body members and how you can become one too. Becoming a governing body member isn't hard if you can get hard because the first thing you need is a penis. Not just any penis, it has to be attached to you when you're born. It also helps if you're white since that will give you the best statistical chance of becoming one of the faithful slaves. If you're brown and don't speak English, you're already starting on the wrong foot. Luckily, if you're a white boy born into the Jehovah's Witness, you won't have too much of an issue, especially if you live in a religious part of the United States where your teachers think the word heterosexual means some sort of deviant choice. You'll have to sit through a lot of meetings which are quite boring. Twice a week you're meant to get dressed up and sit down in silence for a couple of hours while you listen to the most boring talks in the world. If you're already an adult, you're in luck since you can just convert to the religion after living a life outside of it like Toni Morris or Samuel Hurd. But people will probably get suspicious if you convert now since converting into a Jehovah's Witness as an adult is practically unheard of nowadays. As soon as you get baptized to fully convert into a Jehovah's Witness, you'll need to start climbing up the ranks. The main thing you need to worry about right now is your hours. Jehovah's Witness have to report how many hours they've spent preaching every month. And this number will be used as a metric to measure how committed or spiritual you are. No one likes preaching door to door, which is why you can now just stand idle by the card for a few hours. You can't report any hours you spend helping the community without preaching, like helping the elderly or the widows because that would almost sound too biblical. However, you can count any hours you spend working for free for the religion, building things and doing other volunteer work. This will get you a lot of attention and posting about this on social media and encouraging people to also work for free will immediately signal to others how spiritual you are. It can be tiresome, but don't worry, you won't need to do literally any of this when you're at the top. Your focus should be on showing everyone how spiritual you are so you can work for free at the coal compound, Bethel. Bethel has many branches around the world, but since this is an American-based cult, you'll be far more likely to become a governing body member if you are in the same compound as them. That's why your goal should now be joining the headquarters at Warwick. To make you more desirable, you will need some sort of skill, which will be hard to get if you are a born-in since your parents will be against higher education. Not that Bethel has the luxury of rejecting many applicants nowadays. Although you can probably acquire some 3D animation or cinematography skills quite easily to help the cult make more propaganda, your best bet to work directly at Warwick is to become a United States lawyer. Bethel will fast track you if you have any knowledge of the law, since they need so many lawyers just to keep up with the increasing amount of lawsuits around due to abuse, and have been forced to put Bethelites through law school themselves just to meet their needs. The governing body asked Brother Steele uh, who could go through law school to become an attorney. The organization needed a few attorneys to help defend the rights of Jehovah's Witnesses. So the organization made a decision to send you through law school. Once you're recruited into the compound, you need to do two things. You need to start partaking of the implants ASAP, and you need to find a way to work for the service department. Partaking of the emblems will be easy. Next spring, during the yearly commemoration, just have a bite of the crackers and a gulp of the wine as they're passing it to everyone. The rest of the attendants who just pass the crackers and wine without touching them may give you bad stares, but no one is allowed to say you're wrong, so just double down on it. And just like that, you're an anointed, which means you believe God has let you know that you are going to rule next to Jesus in heaven and means you're now eligible to become a part of the governing body. Working for the service department may be trickier though. Bethelites cannot choose where they will be working or for how long. Your best bet will be to not make yourself too valuable in your current department and find and befriend the men in charge of the service department so they invite you in. 
Once you're working for the service department, you'll be answering phones from worried elders about how to apply the Jehovah's Witness law. Although elders have a secret manual filled with details breaking down how the doctrine should be applied in almost every scenario imaginable, because the Bible writers forgot to write one of those, elders will still call Bethel with questions, and you are to answer their questions with the help of your own secret manual that regular elders don't have access to. Some of these will be about very specific cases relating to a specific sin and how that sin should be punished. Most of them will be related to CSA. A huge part of your job will be taking calls from elders who have detailed information about CSA being carried out in their congregations. And your job isn't to check if the child is okay or ensure they get therapy. It's to determine whether the elders can get away with not reporting the abuse to the authorities. After all, this happens so regularly that if the authorities knew, they would just get the wrong idea that this happens regularly. If you're in doubt, the best thing is to never involve the authorities. Some say that this would make you liable if the authorities found out since you're advising someone to do something arguably illegal, but that's why you will never give your name or information to any callers. For all they know, they're speaking to the service department and that's it. And sure, it may be tiresome to pick up these calls about these many cases of kids being abused, but every single one of the current governing body members, including the two new ones, has worked at the service department at some point, probably because that either breaks your faith or galvanizes it. By this point, you should also be an elder, which will allow you to get invited to speak at other congregations and direct other departments. Here's when you want to network smartly. Be as close as you can to the governing body members and governing body helpers. You'll want to be trusted by anyone who's in the high ranks and become what they call a society man, a man who knows all the Jehovah's Witness rules and who only lives and breathes Bethel. This will not only ensure you get the cushiest job and give you some leniency if there are any frictions in the future, but will start paving your way towards your seat at the governing body table. Remember, the governing body is a club by invitation only, so someone inside the body needs to know you and trust you. Ideally, you'll want to become a helper of the governing body, which will get you as close as you need to the governing body itself, but any position of high power is good. Now, it's just a matter of waiting. Governing body members are usually in their 50s, so you can start looking for a nice and subservient sister to marry you if you want to have any kind of sexual intimacy at any point in your life. Since you're a Bethelite, you will be popular among the ladies at home because you're perceived as highly spiritual and therefore highly desirable, so that shouldn't be an issue with you. However, you may want to get a vasectomy as soon as possible since having kids will only complicate your situation because spending time raising kids doesn't directly benefit Watchtower. When you're married, you and your wife can request to be transferred back to work at Bethel. Your wife is only a woman, so she's mostly eligible just for cleaning positions, but with your record of service and your network, you shouldn't find it hard to get a cushy office job. You're at Bethel and the governing body table is closer than ever, but your competition will also be closer than ever. You will not be the only one aiming for a seat, so you need to carefully pick who you'll befriend. In the governing body, there are typically people who are actively changing rules and leading the witnesses, and people who are just tired, agreeing to anything, and waiting for God's kingdom to finally come. Your best strategy is to befriend the active members while staying on the good side of the tired members. After all, the tired members are the ones who are going to die so you can take their place, so it can't hurt to stay on their good side. As soon as you get wind that the governing body is looking for a new member, whether because a previous governing body member died or because they just want to have less work, you'll need to act. Identify the potential candidates that you may be competing with. You can sabotage them in multiple ways. If you have a good enough network, you can just influence it to get your competition out. But you may need to resort to bad tricks, like accessing RedTube from their phone while connected to Bethel Wi-Fi so they get immediately kicked out. However, your competition may also have its strong network to protect them so your best bet will be to get them accused of apostasy. You don't need to be that good at framing them. Just tell a story good enough to be believable and let their rumor mill take its course. Jehovah's Witnesses aren't afraid of anyone more than they are afraid of apostates, and the mere doubt of a witness being one will likely freeze their progress if not derail it altogether for a while. Now that you've gotten rid of the competition and gotten the governing body to like you, all you need is a little bit of luck and a little bit of patience until they invite you into their club and you finally become a governing body member, one of the leaders of the Jehovah's Witnesses.
At this point, they'll announce it as if it's the biggest news ever. Everyone will memorize your name and you can influence their religion to change whatever you want them to change. You can thank me for getting you there by changing it to make it against the religion to not be subscribed to my channel and immediately redirect all donations to my Patreon where I post early content about the spiritual food they use to force feed witnesses. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.